South Korea celebrated its 76th Armed Forces Day with a military parade through the streets of Seoul, the capital, as part of efforts to boost military morale and demonstrate its deterrence capabilities against potential North Korean aggression. South Korean soldiers paraded with thousands of spectators watching from the sidelines. After the parade, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol promised the government would do its best to improve the support and welfare of military personnel. As your commander-in-chief, I have infinite faith in our soldiers, and I will cheer for you along with the South Korean people," he added. The South Korean military also displayed about 340 pieces of military equipment and weapon systems. Among them was its most powerful Hyunmu-5 ballistic missile, which observers say is capable of carrying an 8-ton conventional warhead that can penetrate deep into the earth and destroy underground bunkers in North Korea. It was the first time South Korea disclosed the missile. Also on Tuesday, South Korea launched its strategic command, which officials say integrates South Korea's conventional capabilities with U.S. nuclear weapons. South Korea has no nuclear weapons. Since taking office in 2022, Yoon, a conservative, has put a stronger military alliance with the U.S. and improved trilateral Seoul Washington Tokyo security cooperation at the center of his security policies to cope with North Korea's advancing nuclear program. The two astronauts stuck at the International Space Station since June welcomed their new ride home with Sunday's arrival of a SpaceX capsule. SpaceX launched the rescue mission on Saturday with a downsized crew of two astronauts and two empty seats reserved for Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, who will return next year. The Dragon capsule docked in darkness as the two craft soared 265 miles above Botswana. NASA switched Wilmore and Williams to SpaceX following concerns over the safety of their Boeing Starliner capsule. It was the first Starliner test flight with a crew, and NASA decided the thruster failures and helium leaks that cropped up after liftoff were too serious and poorly understood to risk the test pilot's return. So Starliner returned to Earth empty earlier this month. 
The Dragon carrying NASA's Nick Haig and the Russian space agency's Alexander Gorbanov will remain at the space station until February, turning what should have been a week-long trip for Wilmore and Williams into a mission lasting more than eight months. Two NASA astronauts were pulled from the mission to make room for Wilmore and Williams on the return leg. NASA likes to replace its station crews every six months or so. SpaceX has provided the taxi service since the company's first astronaut flight in 2020. NASA also hired Boeing for ferry flights after the space shuttles were retired, but flawed software and other Starliner issues led to years of delays and more than $1 billion in repairs. Starliner inspections are underway at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, with post-flight reviews of data set to begin this week. Uh, sunset. So they are now in an orbital nighttime, flying about 260 statute miles over the Atlantic Ocean. They'll be crossing over Africa soon. And we're continuing to see a dragon get closer to the International Space Station, now about 17 meters away from the docking port. Uh, this is a pretty cool view, as you can see a camera coming from Dragon and focusing on the docking port itself. So it looks like we are properly aligned. Standing by for the arrival of Crew 9 to the International Space Station. We are also getting some pretty good views here of Dragon approaching uh, station, even though we are in an orbital nighttime and it's pretty dark. Crew 9 has arrived to the International Space Station, docking confirmed at 4.30 p.m. Central Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time over Botswana.